you are considering submitting a tender to a government department, a municipality, or a government entity, or just to learn more about South Africa's tendering process, then this is the right video for you. There are usually several common mistakes that businesses make when submitting a tender which can harm their chances from being appointed as a successful bidder. So in this video, we will explain the tender process in South Africa and also look at some of these common mistakes people make when submitting tenders and how to avoid them. Welcome back to Public Administration 101, proudly brought to you by Kano Consultants. For professional advice, you can trust. In this series of Public Administration 101, we aim to provide a clearer view and a basic understanding of the South African Public Administration. So make sure you check out our other videos on this channel by clicking on the link in the description under this video. Also remember to subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to turn on the notification button to be alerted when we publish new videos. Thank you for subscribing. Now let us get into today's video. The structure of today's video will be as follows. As indicated at the beginning of this video. We will first start by defining what a tender is. We will then explain the purpose of a tender system. We will then discuss the various legislation governing the tender process in South Africa. We will detail the various stages of the tender process you should be aware of. We will then list the 10 common mistakes you need to be aware of before you submit a tender document and how to avoid making these mistakes. Most importantly, we will share with you the warning from government regarding the increased prevalence of tender scams and how to spot such fake tenders. We will also show you where and how to find available tenders. We will then finally conclude by giving you five tips to remember when submitting a tender. Now let us get into it. As a starting point, let us explain what a tender is. A tender usually refers to the process whereby government departments including municipalities and state-owned companies, as well as other private companies and non-governmental organizations, invite offers, commonly referred to as bids, for projects from the public. Such offers are often required to be submitted within a set deadline. Although the process is usually similar, in this video, we will be focusing on tenders issued by government departments, including municipalities and state-owned companies, within South Africa. So why do organizations issue tenders? The government and other organizations issue tenders for the purposes of selecting a suitable contractor at a suitable time, providing an environment that encourages interest and competitive offers from suitably qualified and experienced service providers, for obtaining a fair price and the best value for money for the required service. Essentially, the purpose for following a tender process is mainly to appoint a suitably qualified service provider at a fair and reasonable price. In the South African public sector, the tender process is governed by various regulations. The regulations start with Section 217 of the South African Constitution, which provides that the tender process must be fair, equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost-effective. The constitution is the supreme law of the country, and no other law or government action can supersede the provisions of the constitution. In order to achieve these principles of fairness, equity, transparency, competitiveness, and cost-effectiveness, the constitution further prescribes that the laws, regulations, and guidelines introduced by government must be drafted and implemented to ensure that the tender processes are in line with the constitution. Some of the laws, policies, regulations, and guidelines include the following. As indicated above, the first one and the most important is the Constitution of South Africa, the Public Finance Management Act, the Municipal Finance Management Act, the Preferential Procurement Policy Framework Act, Preferential Procurement Regulations, Various National Treasury Regulations, Various procurement guidelines issued by the National Treasury and the Department of Finance. 
as well as, policies and standard operating procedures, developed within the specific government departments, including within provincial departments, municipalities, as well as state-owned companies. If you are interested to know more about these laws and regulations, we have included a link to our video on public procurement. Please check it out. This is also a good time to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Now let's get back to today's video. It is important for you to know that the tender process is normally divided into three main stages. 1. The pre-tendering stage. 2. The tender submission and selection stage. And 3. The post-awarding stage. Under the first stage of the process, government officials will start by identifying the need for a service, or for an item, or an asset. This will then lead to the planning and budgeting for such need. Officials will then prepare of tender specification and the actual tender invite. This tender invite will then be advertised on a public forum. The next stage in the tender process is the submission and selection stage. This is where the public, usually registered companies and interested parties, compile a tender document or proposal to be submitted. The tender proposal will usually include an offer regarding the service to be offered and also the price to be charged. Tenderers must also ensure that they follow all the instructions indicated on the tender invite, and also ensure that they submit their documents by or before the indicated closing date. The Tender Evaluation Committee will then evaluate the submitted tenders and recommend the company, business, or individual to be awarded the tender. The recommended tender will then be approved by the relevant official within the organization. This will usually be an accounting officer of that government institution. Then the successful bidder will be notified and awarded the tender. They might also be required to sign a contract or a service level agreement with that government institution. The final stage of the tender process will revolve around the management of the contract. This is where the appointed company will be expected to provide the required service. In return, the government institution will compensate them as agreed. These are just general steps. Some government departments may include other steps, as well as other processes and internal controls. As indicated at the beginning of this video, when tendering, there are common mistakes that you must be aware of. In this section, we list some of them and advise you on how to avoid them. Some of these mistakes may seem minor and harmless, but they might actually cost you winning the tender and being awarded the contract. The first typical mistake that bidders make is not understanding what is required. As a potential service provider, you need to demonstrate that you know what is required, so that you can give the client, who is the government, exactly what they have requested and what they could potentially contract you for. Therefore, you must avoid generic submissions that do not demonstrate a sense of understanding. Essentially, avoid any copy and paste for all submissions. Worst of all, do not just cut and paste a previous submission without personalizing or editing it to suit the current tender you are submitting for. The most important advice we can give you today is to always read the tender document carefully first before starting to compile your proposal and submitting it. This will help you to identify the requirements that are relevant to your submission. This will also ensure that your submission actually addresses what is required. Another common mistake is making unfounded assumptions. When reading some of the tenders, you may find that they are unclear and sometimes confusing. This is why some advertised tenders will require that you attend a briefing session, site meeting, or information session, which are sometimes compulsory. And not attending it might lead to your tender proposal being disqualified. Where a tender includes a briefing session, site meeting, or information session, it is advisable to attend. Where there is no briefing session, contact details of the relevant person within the department are usually included in the advertised tender document. You can use these details to ask clarity questions regarding the advertised tender. This is normally done in writing. Our advice is that you must always ask when you do not understand any aspect in the tender document. Assuming may lead to an incorrect submission 
or incorrect format, or missing information. Another common mistake that bidders make is not registering on the central supplier database, often referred to as the CSD. This database is hosted by the National Treasury. So, if you are a potential service provider, or a supplier to the South African government, or are interested in pursuing contract opportunities with the government, you need to register on the Central Supplier Database website. We have included the link to the website below. The CSD serves as the single source of supplier information for organs of state. The website also provides a consolidated, accurate, up-to-date, complete and verified supplier information. As indicated, prospective suppliers who are interested in tendering for business opportunities with the South African government are encouraged to self-register on the Central Supplier Database. This self-registration application represents an expression of interest from the supplier to conduct business with the South African government. Once submitted, the supplier details will be assessed and then verified. If your information fails the verification process on the CSD system, it could indicate that some of the information that you put on the CSD application does not match with the information at the CIPC or the South African Revenue Services or your bank. It could also indicate that you are not compliant with certain legislative requirements. Which brings us to the next mistake that bidders make, which is not being compliant with legislated requirements and formalities in South Africa. So, if you are a prospective service provider, or even a current supplier to the South African government, you need to make sure that you are compliant. By registering your company with the CIPC, and submitting your annual returns. By registering for tax with the South African Revenue Service, and being tax compliant. And I mean, always being tax compliant. This includes submitting your income tax returns, or VAT returns, etc. By verifying your triple BEE status, and having your triple BEE certificate, including updating it annually. If you are in other industries, such as the construction industry, you may need additional certificates, such as your CIDB registration certificate. So make sure you read your tender document carefully, to see if there are any other documents, or requirements that may affect your compliance. Tenderers are sometimes required to complete a pricing schedule. This makes it easier for the evaluation committee to compare the various submissions. If the tenderer does not submit this pricing schedule, or submits an incorrect price, or unsubstantiated price, the tender might not be chosen. Therefore, make sure you submit the pricing schedule as required. And also make sure that you submit the correct price for the service you are intending to perform. Another typical mistake that bidders make when submitting a tender submission is forgetting to sign their bid documents. So make sure that you signed your bid documents on every provided space. Unsigned documents are usually eliminated during the pre-evaluation stage. Another common mistake tenderers make is not including all the required information or submitting the incorrect number of copies required. Simply put, if something is missing, it cannot be evaluated. Sometimes government institutions might give tenderers an opportunity to submit the missing information. But in most cases, this second chance will not be provided. It is also common to be asked to submit a number of copies of the same tender proposal. Therefore, if you want to give your proposal a chance to be selected, make sure that you attach all the required supporting documents, as well as the required number of copies. This goes back to what we said earlier. It is important that you read the tender document carefully in order to understand the requirements. Similar to the last comment, if you do not follow the prescribed format, you might be marked down or eliminated in the process. That is why we cannot emphasize this enough. You need to read the tender document and all the instructions carefully in order to make sure that you submit your tender proposal 
in the correct format as required. You might also be asked to submit the tender proposal, using formats such as USBs, CDs, etc. Another common mistake, is submitting a bid document full of typos, and grammar errors. While you might not be negatively evaluated on your writing skills, you should keep in mind that, you are trying to make a good first impression. This means that you want to provide the confidence, that your business is a professional organization. So if you make a mistake on the bid document, most organizations will allow you to put a cross through the error, and sign, or initial next to it. Therefore, avoid using correction fluid. Also remember to complete your tender submission, using non-erasable ink. We are yet to find an organization, which requires bidders, to complete the tender document in pencil. Last on our list, is one of the most important mistakes that bidders must avoid. That is submitting their tender proposal late. It is safe to say that, if you submit your tender proposal late, no matter how good it is, it will almost certainly be disqualified. Government institutions are usually strict on the closing date, as well as the closing time. Therefore, we cannot stress this enough. Make sure that, you know the closing date of the submission. It is safe to submit your proposal well in advance to avoid a last-minute rush, or at least give yourself enough time to submit, taking into account, the traffic, and any difficulty you might experience in locating the address, and the tender box. In this next segment of the video, we wish to warn you, about tender scams, doing the rounds, and how to spot them. According to the National Treasury, a number of companies, have lost tens of thousands of rands, due to alleged fraudulent tenders, and requests for quotations, which are supposedly from government departments. These tender scams can be difficult to recognize. However, there are signs, you need to look out for. Scammers would often pretend, to be from a valid government department or municipality. These fraudsters, would send businesses a fictitious request for quotation, from what would appear to be a governmental email address, using a fake form with a logo, and contact details of the contact person. When you receive these emails, check the email address of the sender. If the email address looks suspicious, it is not from the government, and it might therefore be a scam. These are examples, of email addresses to avoid. Another trick scammers use, is to say there's a problem. They might say you're in trouble with the government. Or even indicate that you owe money to the government. Or claim that there is an emergency. Some scammers may even say there's a problem with one of your accounts, and that you need to verify some information. One of the most common tricks scammers use, is to pressure you to act immediately. These tender or RFQ requests will usually indicate that it is urgent and that the whole process is required to be concluded within a short period of time. Be wary of anyone, pressuring you to act as fast as possible. Another common trick is when scammers ask you to pay money to secure a tender, even tell you, to pay in a specific method. Remember that government will never ask you to pay any money, to guarantee you a tender. These fraudsters will often insist that, you send the money through a money transfer, whether you are a new bidder, or an experienced one. You are advised to verify all the tenders and RFQs. You can sometimes do this, by calling the departments directly, using the contact details listed on the official departmental websites, to verify authenticity, before responding to any tenders or RFQs. This is to avoid falling prey to these fraudsters. We are certainly sure that, after learning so much, you are now curious to know, how to find, these advertised tenders. In South Africa, the various government departments, municipalities, and state-owned companies, will usually advertise their tenders on various platforms, such as newspapers, including local and community newspapers, the tender bulletins, issued by the government. You can sometimes find advertised tenders, and RFQs, at the government offices, and some in municipal offices, as well as, 
on the websites of the various government departments. There is also an e-tender website, which is hosted by the National Treasury. This website provides access to information on all tenders made by all public sector organizations at all spheres of government. This is also one of the important websites you need to check out for when you are looking for an advertised tender or RFQ. We have included the link to this website under this video. Before we conclude, this is a good opportunity to remind you to leave us a comment below should you have a question regarding any matter addressed on this video. And we will surely respond to you under your comment. We might even provide more clarity by creating a specific video under our playlist, which we titled Public Administration Quick Lessons, where we aim to provide quick and easy to understand answers to some of your questions regarding public administration. In conclusion, remember these five important things before submitting a tender. 1. Always read the bid document carefully and thoroughly. 2. Make sure your business is tax compliant and compliant with other legislative requirement, including annual returns, the UIF, triple BEE, etc. 3. Complete the tender document in full. 4. Submit all the required documents and in the correct format. And 5. Submit your tender proposal on time or at least before closing date. We understand that tendering for the first time and even as an experienced business can be quite daunting. However, we do hope that with this video, we managed to help you on the things to know before getting started and common mistakes to avoid. This has been yet another lesson in Public Administration 101. Proudly brought to you by Kano Consultants. For professional advice you can trust. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. Also make sure that you continue the conversation by following us on social media at Consult Kano or hashtag Consult Kano. Until next time, you can click here to check out our other videos. Thank you.